Hello and welcome to this presentation today on wiring a plug. My name's Mr. McQuire. So before we start today, let's ensure that we're free from distraction. We also need to have access to a pen, paper, ruler and some pencils as well, colored pencils. And I'm going to give you a minute just to go and collect those things or borrow them if you need to now. So in our journey so far, we have looked at static electricity and current and series circuits and potential difference. So we are now on this diagram down at the bottom here today, looking at wiring a plug. So our learning outcomes for today, firstly for our challenge is to be able to describe the wiring in a three pin plug. And then for our Aspire is to be able to explain the purpose of the components of a three pin plug. And we're going to be looking at those in various stages as we move through today's lesson. So for our pre-starter, first of all, I would like you on your piece of paper to write down the two questions that we have here. Firstly, what materials are used to make plugs? And secondly, why are those materials used? So we've got a helpful picture there of a plug. It's not being wired up as you can see. And I'd like to give you a minute and a half just to look at that. Maybe use your own experience of using plugs to be able to help you with that. So you've got a minute and a half starting now. Okay, what I would like to do as we move through this now is just to develop your answers into a more detailed representation of this. So first of all, let's just spend a moment looking at the answers. You may have put down that plastic is used for the case. You may have put down the metal is used for the pins or perhaps you know that that metal that's used is brass which is an alloy 
So let's just look at why those things are used. First of all, for the second point, plastic is an insulator, very definite word that we need to use. So charge cannot flow into someone touching the case. And then uh, secondly, metal is a conductor, so charge can flow around the circuit with wires connected to those pins. But uh, down at the bottom of the page here, we have a point connected with this word stretch. So let's just see if we can stretch your knowledge a little bit. Copper is a better conductor of electricity than brass as an alloy. So why are the pins in the plugs not made from copper instead? I wonder if you've got any initial ideas that you would possibly, if you were in a classroom, share with the class. Well, principally, copper is a very soft metal and brass, because it's been made or mixed with other metals, is uh, slightly stronger. So therefore, it's more hard wearing, less prone to being bent, for example, in pushing in and out of uh, plug sockets for a long period of time. So just make sure that we're clear about those word insulator, perhaps add to your answer and also metal as a conductor. Uh, and let's also just add to our knowledge bank that the pins on a three pin plug are made from brass. Now let's just look for a second at how we wire up a plug as part of a socket. Many students uh, spend a lot of time learning to build circuits in a laboratory and they have red wires coming from a power pack and black wires going to a power pack with some kind of component such as a bulb in between. But then we connect lamps at home and we all see a single wire. And it's important that we understand that that single wire has got uh, a wire going in the same way as the red wire for your circuit diagrams uh, or your circuit building in a laboratory and a black wire inside it. Now they are different colors of wires and we're going to learn about that today. But there is in exactly the same way as in a circuit in a lab a wire going to the lamp and from the lamp, but it's hidden by the plastic sleeve that we have around the outside. So we have a switch on the diagram in front of you, which is connected to a lamp. When the switch is closed, the circuit is complete and we have uh, a completed circuit with a power supply here. So we have energy being taken to the bulb and back to the power pack. And we can represent that on a circuit diagram. So we have the switch here, which is currently open. We have an alternating current supply. So therefore, by closing the switch, the energy can then be taken to the bulb uh, and then returns to the power pack. So that's what's hidden inside the wiring that we see. And obviously the connection to the AC power supply occurs using the thing that today's lesson is about, which is the plug socket. So it's a, an incredibly important component in, in terms of its design safety, in terms of how long it has to last, but also in terms of providing energy to the component that's wired to it. It has various safety features and we're going to look at those. Some of those are uh, more active than others and can be changed, but some like the case, for example, is a passive safety feature made of plastic. So it is an insulator, for example. So at the top of your piece of paper, if you could put a title of a plug, and then underneath that, a plug connects the lamp to a power supply, as we just discussed on the previous slide. There's an instruction there to close your eyes. I don't want you to do that yet, otherwise you won't be able to do any work. Uh, we're going to use your vivid imaginations to help us learn the wiring in a moment. But the first thing I would like you to do, and it's really important that we do this properly, is to use a ruler a pencil and your colored pencils that you've got 
to draw an accurate copy of the plug that we have in front of us. So you familiar with the pins sticking out the uh, back of a plug, all three of them, but there are three connections then inside a plug. And that's what you're looking as if somebody had taken the back off a plug. So we're going to label that diagram that you draw. So please put it in the middle of your page. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to get the title and that down uh, and to get that diagram drawn. If you need to pause the presentation, of course, at that point, you can do that. Just hit the pause button and then restart when you are ready to begin listening again. But I'm going to give you two minutes just to get the title and to get that sentence down and begin the diagram. Well done. Let's just confirm the page that you have in front of you or you'll need to pause the presentation. You've got a title at the top of the page of a plug and then you've got the sentence a plug connects the lamp to a power supply. Then underneath that you've got a good size diagram in the middle of your page of that three pin socket. So if you need more time just pause that presentation now. So let's just pick this up and I would like you to use your imagination now. I'm going to read the following sentence to you to help you learn the wiring. And the reason we're asking you to close your eyes is because if you engage your ma imagination with this process, then it will help you to remember them. So imagine a lively brown dog running through a field of yellow and green plants. Please visualize yellow and green plants growing from the earth. The sky is a neutral blue color. Okay, let's try that one more time. Imagine a lively brown dog running through a field of yellow and green plants growing from the earth. The sky is a neutral blue color. Okay, let's see what you have learned from that. So I'd like you now to continue your notes and I would like you to just put the heading down uh, that is there, a plug has three wires and I'd like you to label them next to that with live, neutral and earth. 
and using the visual memory that you have i'd like you to just write down the colors that you've learned so i'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to do that Okay, so you've had a couple of minutes there. So let's look at those colors that we've got there. So here we have a brown dog in a field where we have green and yellow plants connected to the earth with a neutral blue sky. So hopefully you have written down that we have uh, brown, which is uh, a live wire and you'll notice somebody's done something very clever here that I would like you to add to your notes so brown begins with a B and an R and a B and an R stands for bottom right and neutral stands for uh, or has a blue wire and that is a bottom left and finally we have the earth wire with those lovely plants which are connected to it which were yellow and green so if you could just update and add to your colors with those little speedy ways of remembering how brown is the bottom right when we will uh, wire a plug and blue is bottom left i'll give you a minute to do that
Okay, so we've uh, found some easy ways of remembering the uh, colors of a wire that go into a plug and also the positioning of some of those inside the plug itself. And we've also now know some of the materials with brass pins and a plastic case with insulators and conductors. So we've had that uh, strange description for you because you should now, using your mind and the labels in your book, be able to label your plug diagram. If you've had no colors, I would like you to add the description of the color as well as the name of the wire. So you've got three wires to label. I'm gonna give you two minutes just to make sure that your diagram is updated, make sure that it is as accurate as possible. Just to say again, if you have no colors, please label the colors that that wire would be as well as the name of the wire, uh, neutral, live or earth. You've got two minutes to do that in. So the labels that are there, we've got the earth, which is top middle, bottom left is the blue, bottom left neutral, and the bottom right is the live wire. So let's uh, move on now, see if we can add some more details to your diagram. But before we do that, we're now going to look at some issues that we should be able to spot in terms of uh, wiring diagrams now it's a very important skill in the United Kingdom because these are the plug sockets that are a British standard as we would call them so they're fitted to all our electrical appliances I'm going to show you a couple of pictures now that have problems in the wiring uh, and I want to just start to upskill you in spotting issues that there are in terms of being able to uh, wire plug sockets properly and safely. So let's look at the following two photographs. These have been wired wrong, just to give you a help for a second. I have labeled this one picture one and this one picture two. I'd like you to spend a minute now just looking at the photographs. I'd like you to say what's wrong with those photographs. Uh, so you've got one minute just to have a look at them and describe what's wrong with the wiring in those.
Okay, I'd like to actually start with picture number two. So picture number two uh, is very tidily wired. Uh, there are no little bits of wire visible around the edges as it should be, but there's one big problem. Brown begins with BR, which stands for bottom right, and on this they've uh, wired it into the bottom left. And BL, blue for, and the neutral wire, is uh, the wrong way as well. So swapping the blue and the brown wires over, over would correct that particular problem. Now this uh, number one picture has got all kinds of problems. Uh, not least that somebody has wired two wires into the same plug socket. Uh, so you can see uh, it's more than two. We have three neutral wires. Uh, they are into the right socket, but there are three wires put into one plug. And here we can see the same with the brown wires, the live wires. Uh, on top of that, they've also no fuse in this particular uh, socket that it is here as well. So let's have a look at our challenge in Aspire, a bit of a catch up. For our challenge to be able to describe the wiring in a three pin plug, and that's got a large green tick on it. And now let's uh, look at our Aspire to be able to explain the purpose of the components of a three pin plug. So we're now going to just expand our diagram slightly for the next few slides. And you need to be ready with a pen to allow you to do that. So here's our diagram again of a plug socket. This time it's got a wider number of labels and we again have the neutral blue, live brown, earth green and yellow. But this time you can see that we have labeled something called a cable grip, which is a very important piece of a plug. It uh, is designed there to take the load of any pull on the wire to prevent it from pulling directly onto the small wires going into the pins made from brass. And obviously that then helps, for example, with a vacuum cleaner to prevent the wires from being pulled out, which is potentially dangerous or will just sort it, uh, stop it from working. We also have a thing called a fuse that's labelled here as well. So we're going to look at these in more detail now as we go through and label your. So let's uh, look at one part of a plug now. We have a fuse in front of us. This is a nice picture because this particular fuse is transparent, which allows us to see the fuse wire inside it. So when a large current flows, the fuse wire gets hot and the fuse wire will melt and that will stop one end of the fuse connecting the live wire into the circuit protecting the equipment and the user as it's used. So here we have a sentence. It's uh, wrong and it just needs writing down in your notes next to the part of your plug. So I'd like you to spend a minute and a half now just uh, updating this. Uh, could you put A, B and C in the correct order as to how a fuse works? Off you go.
Okay, let's look at that. So first of all, we have B, the fuse wire gets hot. This makes it melt. C is your next one. And finally for A, this breaks the circuit. So a fuse in summary then is something that melts when too much current flows. Now it's a summary of that. So let's have a look now at the cable grip. The cable grip holds the wires in place. So if you could now add that to your diagram, we're just going to go through some 30 second intervals now and try and get that information on your diagram as quickly as possible. So just 30 seconds. So that's the role of the cable grip. Let's talk about the insulation for a second. So the insulation, which is both the plastic of the plug and also the plastic around the wire, the insulation prevents the user getting an electric shock. So if you can now add that, you've got 30 seconds to do that. Let's continue. The live wire is the equivalent to the wire connected to the positive side of a battery or cell. It carries a potential difference of 230 volts. So again, that's connected to the fuse. There's the live wire. So if you can add that information, get writing now, please. So if you need to pause it to complete that, please do that now. So the live wire is carrying 230 volts, a potential difference of 230 volts to be more accurate. Let's look at the neutral wire. The neutral wire completes the circuit after the charges flow to the appliance. So it has a potential difference of zero volts. So the whole plug socket has a difference on one side to the other of 230 volts. So if you can now uh, add to your diagram about the neutral wire. Again, pause the presentation if you need more time, which you may do. 
So we have now looked at the cable grip, the outer insulation, the material of the casing. During the presentation, we've talked about why the pins are made of brass and not copper. We know that the live wire has a potential difference of 230 volts and the neutral wire zero volts. And we know that the fuse that's in there is a safety device that melts when too much current flows through the circuit. So we've covered a lot of detail today about the various parts of a plug. That's just again repeating the role of the cable grip and uh, giving us a last chance to just look at the positioning of the wires inside a plug. So I hope that's clear for you now. So here's a bit of a plenary for us. So the earth wire is A, B or C. Thinking of that uh, lovely little eye closed activity at the start. Hopefully you thought yellow and green. Let's try another one. The live wire is connected to the pin at the. So you're thinking about the color of the live wire, which is going to help you with the position. So you've thought brown, which stands, starts with BR, and which is bottom right. The wire connected to the fuse is the visualize your diagram or check in your notes. The answer is the live wire. The case is made of plastic because it is an insulator, a conductor or cheap. We like answer C, uh, but obviously that's not correct and neither can be B. So the answer must be an insulator possibly a conductor or we would have real problems plugging any appliance in. Too much current flows put the sentences in order. So as you can see they are already in order. The fuse wire gets hot. This makes it melt and then this breaks the circuit protecting the user and the appliance that's uh, connected to the mains electricity I wonder if you can remember what mains electricity's potential difference is what's that number we're remembering hopefully you've got 230 volts in your mind so here's our final slide so in today's lesson for the challenge was to be able to describe the wiring in a three pin plug. And I think we've done that very well. Look at your notes just to check that. And then for our Aspire was to be able to explain the purpose of the components in a three pin plug. And we've spent uh, the second half of the lesson do that. My name is Mr. McGuire. Thank you for staying with this presentation today and goodbye.